You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's After Show. Hey there, Ruby fans. Welcome to another episode of the Ruby Recap for Woo! After Buzz TV. Are you guys excited? Yes. Yes, yes we Especially are. Especially with the music going. Uh, yeah. I know, right? Oh, it's so intro good. Awesome. you in the mood. You're ready to go. I really love this second totally. intro. It's just I, fantastic. I like all of the music <laughs> equally. <Yes. laughs> We're here to talk about episodes three and four, A Minor Hiccup and Painting the Town. Joining me on the panel today is Mark Donica. Hi, I'm new. Katie Cullen. Salutations. And Patrick D. What is up? <laughs> and I'm your host, Megan Salinas. Hi, and Megan. We also have some very, very special guests with us here this evening. Joining us via Skype is Kara Eberly and Lindsay Jones, aka the voice of Weiss and the voice of Ruby Rose. How are you guys doing tonight? Fantastic. Hey, great. Thank How are you, you doing? Great, especially now that you guys are here. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Are you kidding me? Thank you so much for having us. We're honored to be here. It's awesome. <laughs> Great. Especially to hear that you guys love the intro, too. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. This Why would we not? It's this fantastic. One, like, blew me away. I know it got me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we line. all were. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I need to go. I need to go to iTunes and get the soundtrack for this yes. season. Is the entire soundtrack Absolutely. for this season uh, available yet, or is it just a couple EPs? I was going to say the available yet. Volume one is. You can actually get it uh, on iTunes or on Amazon download if you're interested. But yeah, and that's uh, the vocals and the musical talents of Jeff and Casey Williams. Casey is actually his daughter. And she's a, um, all the girl vocals that you'll hear in the intro, too. That's all her. And she's 15? Yeah, I think she's around 15. She's absolutely amazing. She is adorable and so sweet and so humble. And you would never expect this huge voice to come out of such a teeny little body. But <laughs> yeah. Those are some pipes, for it's sure. So it's impressive. Metal. Yeah, if you guys oh, yeah. are down with the intro, absolutely check out the Volume 1 soundtrack. It's superb. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much again. So these episodes, I know, Kara, you and I got to speak a little bit at Comic-Con this time around, but uh, these episodes, we, we do get a little bit more of Weiss's history. That was something I was curious about at Comic-Con. Right, definitely. Like I said, you know, we get to venture out of Vail a little bit, you know, out of Beacon and see a little bit more of the outside world that's going on. And that's kind of what I was referencing in our interview, but I couldn't say exactly what was going on. <laughs> However, you know, you can spill, spill girl. <laughs> right. And it was really cool too. Uh, even Lindsay and I were noticing that the Schnee does company, the building, the, it looks like the rapier at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. If, you, if you look back tower. and notice it, the transit tower looks a lot like um, her weapon, which is pretty cool, and it might be a little bit coincidental. And you also get to see how she kind of really feels about her family, and it, you know, it gets a little bit deeper than everyone probably thought. Yeah, especially in comparison to Volume One, and we actually spoke about that earlier today. Uh, with the introduction of the characters, you obviously we have to get to know who they are and what their relationship is with everybody else in the cast and where they are in this world that they're in. But now that we have that established, we can kind of delve into what each character's background is like and their interactions with each other so we're seeing a little bit more of softer side of Weiss we're seeing a little bit more emotion from Blake and so on it's really exciting yeah and uh, we we really like getting to see the different aspects of these characters and getting to find out more about them it is really great and especially for for this t for these two episodes because we have our characters splitting up and they they work wonderfully as a team, as we see when they come back together. But um, but when they well, split four up, of them do. <laughs> the guys are useless. Seriously, I they adore the fact fine. that the girls get stuff done, and the guys are like, "Well, we tried. Time to get noodles." <laughs> yeah, boys suck. Exactly <laughs> what I said yes. earlier. It's exactly what I said. I'm like, of course, typical guy move. Ah, uh, let the women handle it. No, Let's go get some food. No, listen, those noodles aren't going to eat themselves. I don't know why people are so upset about this. I mean, I. You have to get that reference in. Uh, yeah, you have exactly. to get the Mortar absolutely. reference in. You do have to get the simple walk into Mortar exactly. reference. That exactly. was pretty great. What did I say? Did y'all catch that reference? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> 
definitely an Easter egg for our fans specifically who are like, oh, I recognize that from said video or said uh, said joke that we made in a video. And it's it's exciting to get messages from people going, oh, I saw what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a lot of that in this like episode. <laughs> the ship names. Oh, oh. Yeah. My gosh, I was crying. I was laughing so hard yeah. when that happened. At first, I was like, are they doing that? And then they get to Bumblebee, and I'm like, oh, my God, they, they did. They did the <laughs> thing. It's not battle until they get to your ship, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no. the one I'm, I'm most ship. familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> they changed a couple of them, though. Um, monochrome, Actually, uh, yeah. Originally, it was supposed to be, we were going to kind of give a shout out to the ship names that already exist. I know you guys had spoken about the Tumblr audience being excited for oh, everything yes. Volume 2-esque. They are in, like, they're into that show, and it's awesome to see people so dedicated and invested in this story that Monty's created that we get to be a part of. But a big part of that is the shipping aspect, of course. <laughs> so, um, especially with the four main girls, you know, people like to see uh, certain pairings go together. And we thought, you know, Absolutely. why don't we give a shout out? But... It seemed weird to just mention the ships that already exist because that's a different universe. It doesn't exist. We're in Vale or at Beacon. So we made our own. That's why we have Checkmate and uh, Ice Flower and Freezer Burn. Ice Flower, Freezer Burn. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say Aaron and I came up with Team Monochrome, which we like much better than Checkmate. So I don't know what y'all think. <laughs> Team Monochrome, yeah? Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. done. So That's a t-shirt I Tuesday. actually yeah. like Checkmate. I, 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 monochrome is great, but I like Checkmate. As a strategy, I like Checkmate better as a name. As a ship, gotta <laughs> go with monochrome. This is a very color-themed show. That's true. Okay, that's fair. I'm with you, but if I'm fighting them, I'm more intimidated. Oh, they're throwing checkmate at me? Like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't oh. even know what's coming out of that. <laughs> was it just me or did that mech just fall apart? Yeah. yeah. It was oh. like a Mega Man villain. It just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, and uh, going back to you to watching the four girls interact together, but just that's one thing that it was mentioned in the trailer or shown at least was the mech that appeared in this yeah. episode. And people were so excited to see what, it, what it's going to be like to have this giant power force fighting against the four main girls. And, you know, they they have very, uh, I would say, otherworldly powers at <laughs> yes. certain points. Clearly, right. clearly we defy the laws of physics in many of our <laughs> battle scenes, but <laughs> it's all working together, though. We have exactly. to work together or else, you know, we don't really accomplish anything, which, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's... It's true. true you yeah, know? Yeah. And going back, you know, Neptune and Sun are just hanging out eating noodles. Well, we're getting <laughs> stuff done, so take that. Exactly. <laughs> and that was actually the thing that really stood out to me about um, Episode 4 was when they do start calling out those battle formations, they know exactly how to play off of one another, and they know exactly what to do uh, when Ruby is leading the way. So I thought that was fantastic. You know they practiced over semester break. <laughs> oh, yeah, duh. They Absolutely. We have to of do course. this. They all got together. They had, like, a sleepover. They're like, okay. Your turn. <laughs> Ruby's got it this name, this list of names. We had a giant robot. <laughs> what would How would we handle this? <laughs> I'm sure someone in the group made up a binder and just like Ruby. For the <laughs> you know, Ruby <laughs> just came up one. with this list sure. of terms, <laughs> and Weiss was like, "No, no, maybe." What were you thinking? No, mm -hmm. no. Oh, I like that one. No, no. <laughs> I did that in real life for Ruby preparation anyways when we got the first script I made a big binder and I highlighted everything and everyone else in the cast was like you're such a nerd <laughs> <laughs> you're like whatever this is going to be the best season ever Exactly. You'll see. It is so that. far. Hey, I should make fun of you. I'm just as organized as she is. I, I, pull, <laughs> I, I play a wise. Yeah. You, yeah. 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 You were talking about um, your your process for getting into character with Weiss in terms of the the level of detail that you take when you go over the script. Well, and actually, right. we have a question from Tumber from. Aiden, A I D E Y N. I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce that. Asking how you prepared for the scene in the comm tower, if there was any direction that you received or if there was any particular emotion you were channeling to prepare for a very subtle but very emotional scene. Um, well, considering I had known the background um, of Wise and how she came from such a difficult family, I definitely used that um, you know, as a way to kind of trigger some sort of emotion. I definitely stared, and it, it, it sounds weird, but I kind of stared at the wall, but down. So it's kind of, you naturally have this, you know, mm -hmm. like sobering sadness feeling when you're looking down. Almost like submissive. Too. Exactly, yeah. very submissive. And it was it was really fun and, and really interesting to kind of, you know, play off of something that I also knew the audience would absolutely love. It's something that they've kind of wanted to figure out a little bit more about Weiss and 
um, you know, what is she exactly about? And now you really get to see in this episode, you know, she's not really as perfect as she's, you know, trying to appear to be, at least as far as her family goes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and same. what's interesting, too, is we talked about it earlier, but some fans have mentioned, they're like, oh, what if Weiss, because uh, it's been revealed that Weiss has a sister named Winter, which we discovered in the episode as well, mm -hmm. uh, and knowing that she has another sibling, a lot of fans have asked us, is Weiss the problem child? Is she the one who didn't meet her parents' expectations mm -hmm. and now she's trying desperately to get to that level? And, you know, honestly, even we don't know. So it's exciting. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they do keep you guys in the dark about certain things. Sorry, can you say that one more time? Oh, they do keep you guys in the dark about certain things in terms of, like, character, uh, you know, that character backstory. I think we're all just trying uh, to figure bit, out. Yeah. <laughs> Monty, uh, specifically Monty likes to work a lot with uh, the character designers and a concept artist and he'll kind of speak with them about what he wants from a character before approaching us with the, the finalized script or even just ideas he has about the character. And in certain ways it, it benefits us. I like that enough because then mm -hmm. we're discovering things along with our character and we're going oh okay at this moment that she learns this mm -hmm. I'm also this about the other character so it makes for a more genuine reaction I would right. say I yeah, think, sure. yeah the writers and directors are definitely really good about doing that they give us just enough information mm -hmm. to where we're able to channel the character and the emotion but at the same time they don't reveal everything to us because if it's a surprise to our character then it also needs to be genuine so it's a surprise to us as actors as well I yeah. love it. it makes sense when you guys are handed the actual the finalized scripts. How much like uh, how much input or maybe pushback? Do you ever do you ever get a line and go? You know, Ruby would just never say that, or Wise would never say this. She'd say it like that. Like, what kind of feedback do you guys have <laughs> once you're handed that script? There's, there's, a, no. there's a few moments of that with Ruby. I don't know if there's been Wise. Has there been? Um, <laughs> the, actually, the very last line today was kind of thrown in a little bit last minute that, you know, why sit with the, the pun? She tried a little bit. <laughs> right, right. I'm so happy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and it was so funny because I'm I'm always the one to kind of do that naturally as Kara myself. I will make stupid, funny jokes and everyone will be like, no, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Yang of all people saying no. I know. Right. So then when, right. when they came with, with Weiss, I was like, Oh, that that's gonna be awesome. Then I'm like, wait, why is this too perfect for this? I don't know if she'd be comfortable with that. And I'm like, you know, we're just gonna give it a try, and that's what you'll see later on the season as well. Why gets out of her shell a lot more and is able to be a little bit, you know, nicer and kind of understanding of the characters and a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say necessarily like changes of the script specifically, but whenever I get into the booth, uh, a lot of Ruby is uh, just like kind of whimsical I guess like she's very playful and she's sure. a fun person to be around so sometimes I'll just throw out stuff I'm like sorry I, I was in character and I thought it'd be funny so I said this and they're like no no no, I like it let's let's keep that in the script so there's a couple times specifically in volume one there's a couple of ad libs that are just things that I threw mm -hmm. out there and they happened to stick I was like oh good I'm glad you felt, felt like it was good with the character excellent sure. yeah we talked about that earlier right? today actually that the the line that you did oh the, uh, the after <laughs> I'm Weiss I'm rich yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was ad <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing my mind off. I really thought it was written because nope. she sounded just like me. And Lindsay goes, "Nope, that was an ad lib." I was just like, "I'm nice. Look at me. I'm perfect." I'm rich. <laughs> Sorry, I made fun of your character. It's okay. It's okay. I still love you. It, it made me laugh, so it's all right. <laughs> oh gosh, that's hilarious. Uh, speaking of which, yeah, we, we, we do get a lot of very interesting dynamics in this particular episode. Since we talked a little bit about Weiss, let's talk a little bit about Ruby now. Uh, Ruby gets to reunite with Penny very briefly. Um, and I'll be honest, yes, I was actually Anna. really nervous at first because Penny was acting very robotic. I was really afraid that somebody had hit like a reset button on She's her. been hit with an imp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's been powered down and repowered on. Uh, <laughs> Had a hard reset. I, I do love Ruby's interaction with Penny in general, and I know we had, uh, whenever they first talked to each other, Penny was kind of thrown into the group, and she was the one that they were a little bit wary about uh, having them join them, I guess. She she was the new kid, I should say, and now we get to have this relationship between her and Ruby where they're their own separate, they have their own separate friendship that they can build upon, and now Penny has trusted Ruby with this amazing secret, which, you know, I'm just going to... Uh, assume people have seen the episode, so sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the assumption for sure. It's been a week. Oh, if they haven't, yeah. 
She's just not a real girl. She's the first uh, cybergenic human, or uh, it's, I guess if you're going to go with a literal definition, it's a cyborg, but she can create an aura. So she's not human, but she's able to produce the human, um, again, aura. How do I explain that? The energy field, I guess, mm -hmm. that humans That's can aura, create yeah. in this world. Yeah. Yeah. So she's she's an innovative piece of technology, basically, that wants to be a human and wants to have friendships. And that's exciting to see. And to see Ruby adapt to that, too, because the base of Ruby as a character is pure innocence. Whenever she says something or does something, she means it. So whenever she says to Penny, you know, you're my friend and I care about you, she means it. So I, I assume, I feel like later on, there's going to be a lot more character development into the two characters. And maybe Ruby saving Penny from some stuff that might not be too good. What yeah. would that shit name be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of one, but it's not really appropriate. Were you, were you um, thinking Pooby? I was thinking Pooby. Oh, I was going to say Pete. Uh, <laughs> you be. There you go. The or uh, we'll go with oh, Pinby. Yeah. No, it's Pinby. <laughs> I wish I was good at coming up with How ship about names. Steel Magnolia. Ah, yeah. oh, that could work maybe. <laughs> That's pretty good. Steel Magnolia. Ooh. Yeah. You want to be writers? Yeah. <laughs> I would love to write for you guys, like, but I don't awesome. think. This is been part of our work time doing is like, what would a good ship name be? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's like we ever. do all day. Yeah. She wasn't spending the last hour, you know, editing achievement hunter stuff or anything. You know, she was putting out names. That was happening. But it is fun. <laughs> Times we'll show each other pictures too, or, or like obviously there's a bunch of fan art on Tumblr, and people are amazing artists, and they'll come up with all these elaborate things that we can never think about. But we always see uh, certain pairings of our characters, and we're like, oh, did you see that drawing of the uh, Weiss and Ruby holding hands? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is my shirt backwards? And is, is it reading backwards? No. no, no, it looks no. like it's reading Hello we Kitty. Can, yeah. Halo Kitty. We can Halo read Kitty. Halo yeah. Kitty. Yeah. Kitty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know, we didn't plan that. <laughs> <laughs> They're both Spartan helmets. It's adorable. Well, that's okay. Megan and Patrick match, and they didn't plan that either. No. That's true. I We're mean, totally well, I'm, I'm wearing a UNSC shirt, and I did not plan for that either. Fantastic. Brand, you brand didn't plan to that. wear a shirt? No, not at all. <laughs> so The ratings are so much better. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, and also, <laughs> apologies to Charles. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's overrated. Uh, anyway, they, um, just speaking about Ruby potentially half a having to save Penny, there is kind of this impo impending threat of obviously Ironwood's new technology that he's implementing into the city. Uh, the, the Elysium Knights and the Elysium Paladin, which was the big mech yeah. that we see at the very end. Um, so everything like that. Here's what I'm wondering, theory-wise. So we have that they are from, I just lost the name of the kingdom. Oh my gosh. Remnant, right? No, the... Oh, yes. oh. <laughs> that was a yes. The Kingdoms of Remnant, yes. Yes, but the kingdom that Ironwood is from. Is he I from Atlas? Or thank he... you. Okay. Yep. Yes. Sorry, so yeah, he's I was from... like, sorry. I was like, oh, no. wait. The, whole yeah. Yeah, I got <laughs> the one thing I don't have in my <laughs> notes that I need in my note. List of kingdoms, mythology. list of people. Wow. Monty has so. an entire map laid out of everything, which is funny enough. He started a. It began as a ketchup stain on a napkin that he folded ketchup together. Ketchup and mustard, right? <laughs> yeah. Based off of, uh, okay. Ketchup, okay. Mustard stained napkin, and that is the map and of the somehow, world of Ruby. And now all the Some continents look like dragons. Artwork right there. <laughs> delicious, delicious map. All of the continents <laughs> look like dragons now. Seriously, all, <laughs> look at look at a map of Remnant. They all look like dragons. But anyway, what was but your anyway, theory? Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ironwood's from Atlas. Cinder said that she was from Atlas when she was talking to Ruby. Ironwood mm -hmm. is in cahoots with the Schnee Corporation. They made these mechs. Uh, White Fang got the mechs. I'm on my fifth finger already. This is <laughs> White Fang got the mechs. Just go to your toes. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> other fingers. Good hands. Torchwood said that it was from his employer, Cinder. How does this fit together? There are too many pieces. Dude, we're on episode that are very four. Similar. It's going to be a big season. We're an <laughs> hour in. Yeah. We're an hour in. That is more than enough time to start making theories. Mm. Oh, yeah. Especially well, not even theories. It's... I mean, it's already been proven that Cinder is working with Torchwick, and Torchwick has his henchmen, which have been revealed in uh, the first episode of Volume 2, which is Mercury and uh, Emerald. Mm -hmm. And recently, in the last episode that just aired today, we have another henchman that is named Neo, which is short for Neapolitan. Neapolitan. Who yes. wants ice cream, ice cream now? I'm so excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> 
In case anyone Don't was wondering what the Neapolitan <laughs> spam from Monty the was. joke, please. Uh, it all makes sense now. But seriously, I think uh, I think In-N-Out has like a Neapolitan they mil do. milkshake. I, I actually, really want that right I took now. a picture of mine and tweeted it to Monty just, and asked him if I could join the party. <laughs> yeah, absolutely you can. We'll be going to In-N-Out after this. <laughs> You have in and out. Maybe, maybe you can have like a strawberry one. shortcake character or something. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I think that's amazing. trademarked. <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, Hasbro would not be happy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we know that they're connected, obviously, with the White Fang. We've seen uh, Blake specifically in Volume One has gone to a White Fang meetup with Torchwick to exchange certain goods. So we know that that's already happening, and we know that there's a lot of connection between the anger of the white fang towards humans that is basically being used as a tool to manipulate the rest of the white fang and mm -hmm. to kind of push the motivation of a uh, torchwick and cinder and what they would like to achieve so it's it's very complex mm -hmm. but yes <laughs> the it's, question is oh. now cinder and ironwood do they have a relationship why is ironwood building all of these robots when it is quote a time of peace and what the heck has he told penny there's well, apparently a lot it's of not a time of peace. Yes. A time of peace is, is what is publicized, or I guess what would be a good propaganda for the citizens, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it absolutely is not. It's not necessarily that I feel like everyone else believes there's a time of peace, but there's a war brewing, and people aren't aware of the forces that are currently gathering in mm -hmm. order to take over uh, what is currently their established government mm -hmm. and possibly the people in power. So for Ironwood uh, and his connection to Penny, uh, her herself as a person and this uh, this technology that can now create an aura, this cybernetic human, uh, she's basically going to be used as a weapon and ideally mass produced in order to fight uh, on the side of the White Fang and to again push the motivations of Cinder and Torchwick. So uh, you know that obviously brings a lot of conflict when Penny is expressing herself as a person and saying, "I have these innocent." Innocent traits, these kind of feelings. has a soul, basically. Yeah, she's exactly. not just completely, you know, robotic. And I am not a gun. <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 oh. And, and, and her hiccups are also funny too, because that's you know her sign that yeah. she's. Lying. Yeah, that was than, a fun yeah. little character trait. I didn't notice it until episode four when she blatantly lied. But going back to episode three, I'm like, oh, that's why she's hiccuping the entire episode. That well, makes sense. And also grow. gives her that human characteristic that, you know, a robot wouldn't really have. Yeah. So it, it's definitely really interesting and um, we, in that aspect. She mentions, too, Penny, specifically, that uh, her father was the one who created her. It wasn't Mr. Ironwood. And mm -hmm. that's uh, some fans get confused about that, too. But Ironwood is not the, her creator, I should say. But her father was working with uh, Mr. Ironwood, so we, as far as their connection, we're going to get a lot more into that a little bit later. But Ooh. we know that Penny was created with good intentions, but now she and that technology that was used to make her is being used, you know, for war propaganda, basically. Yeah. So and, two dads. <laughs> and uh, we had Monty on the show last week, and he was talking about how Ironwood is a character who has good intentions. And so it, it's going to be very interesting to see how, again, somebody who has good intentions, how, you know, they the can be led to hell, astray, so to speak. Right. But let's talk a little bit uh, about the other teams that were going on, because um, we do have a lot sure to go through. But um, before before I do, we should probably mention iTunes really quick. Yes. Yes. Folks, uh, if you're if you fans of AfterBuzz, if you're fans of us talking about the Ruby After Show and having just a general good time, hanging out and talking to people like Lindsay and Kara, having a good time, uh, go to iTunes and please slap us with a five star rating. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the show. We read the comments that are on YouTube. We read the comments that are on iTunes, and it's it's the one thing that lets our bosses know that you like these types of shows that we're doing. That you like what we're doing here. Keeps the lights on and it keeps us all sitting here and getting to talk about this awesome show with you guys. So, <coughs> tell us you love us because we love you. <laughs> Be yes. gentle in the we comments. We love you! <laughs> I was going to say, no. is that oh. what that was Which, which camera are we love. looking at? Instantly <laughs> validated. Instant yes. gratification. Totally. Okay. I should clarify, especially for Monty's sake, because I know he would like me to say this, but uh, in the note of Ironwood using Penny and having good intentions, it is true. And that is one of the complexities of Ruby as well and going into this volume is two forces having what they believe is good intentions, but, you know, obviously dealing with the, the way that other people can perceive the opposite side. And even though each side has their own reasons for joining the fight, it may not necessarily be the best ones. 
but that's all, I'll leave you with that. <laughs> so there's no good and evil. There's just people working at cross purposes. I like Basically. that. I will quote red versus blue as much as <laughs> no, I can. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Yep. It's very similar to red versus blue, especially this season. If you guys have been watching. Mm -hmm. The, oh the, dang! The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. True story. I was very into the. Uh, I was Red vs. Blue season one. Ordered the DVD and the uh, the Puma reference today. I or earlier this season. I lost. It. I was so in love with that scene that, that at the point the girl that I was dating at the time, she, I knew she was great people when she laughed at that. And I even made her. I, shameless, I'll admit it. I made a mixtape called Mythical Creatures right around. And so like I had a big time love for that. But what I want to say before we jump back, um, guys, if you are in the chat. Hit me up directly. I'm seeing a lot of questions come through, but I'm having a hard time keeping up with some of those. But we definitely, it's one of my favorite things about AfterBuzz TV is that you're able to interact with the conversation. So uh, if you're there, find the goofy looking redheaded avatar uh, and find me and send me some questions. We'll try and get a few on the air. Sounds good. Cool. And, uh, and also, uh, feel free to tweet us your questions as well. We've seen a couple, I've seen a couple on Twitter, but we kind of covered most of them, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I go. have, those of you who sent in Tumblr questions, I have them. They're sitting right <laughs> in front of me. You have not been forgotten. Okay, well, let's jump back into the episodes a little bit. So we talked about Ruby and Penny, and we talked about Weiss. Let's talk a little bit about Neptune and Yang and I'm how so great happy. it is to see Junior again. <laughs> I'm so happy that right. Neptune was so Junior's useless. Junior's a fantastic character to have come back. And, you know, Karen and I, we know Jack <laughs> personally. And, Very well. <laughs> and he's always, it's interesting because he's in the Achievement Hunter world, and you always see him mm -hmm. doing video game commentary or uh, achievement guides. And when he was first approached to do a voice part, in Ruby, he seemed a little bit hesitant, but now he's such a lovable character. People are they're going crazy lovable over or just really likable. <laughs> like, I was he's, he's pretty fluffy. I feel like a teddy bear vibe. I could hug him for a while. That's what I'm getting. Well, there is an actual teddy bear in the club for whatever that's worth. It's true. <laughs> that well, did, terrified did, DJ. Was it that dead mouse reference? Yeah. Or? Very, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Very similar Dead Mouse vibe, yeah. <laughs> but I just loved everyone in the club, their reaction to seeing Yang come back. She's back, she's yeah, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. close the doors, close yeah. oh, the doors. <laughs> 400 guns. Let's close doors up. That's not going to work. She, right. she just emanates fierce when she goes into that club. It's like, do not mess with me right now. I have an agenda and I will destroy you. It's yeah. like, oh, all right. My goodness. And okay. I love the okay. moment, too, when it happens, too, because when they, they, you know, she's like, hi, everybody, and they have the guns pointed at her. And you just get this moment of when she stops smiling and puts on serious business face. And it's just like, oh. And then Neptune ruins it. So define friend again. To sit down, you're not important. Big kid table. <laughs> Go sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mommy exactly. and daddy are talking yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> he just he asks the dumb questions. He nearly falls off the motorcycle. He falls off the highway. It's like you're hot, but that's all you're good for. I made you it up with this useless. weapon, but we'll get there. Uh, what? Wait, isn't that how all guys are, though, right? You know, <laughs> well, no, not yes. all guys are hot. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Guys. Uh, I'm not a good person. Little bit. You guys, guys have a great rest no. of the show. We'll be seeing you later. We have useless <laughs> gentlemen. I'm sitting yes. next to them. Yes, I take pride You guys aren't that. useless. We nah. love having you here on the Do you panel. want any noodles? Should we go get noodles? <laughs> They'll be fine, right? They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go punch a robot. What perfect. I really loved about this scene is that we finally get kind of an answer as to what Torchrick was doing there in the yellow trailer to begin with. We, we get some dialogue on that, and Junior comes clean. He's like, look. Um, he came here, he paid up front, he wanted to borrow some of my men, they went, and now they've never come back. You know what happened to him? Those are the guys that Ruby what? flattened Just in the first okay. episode. Destroyed <laughs> them. <Yes>. Absolutely <laughs> knocked them flat. <laughs> Yeah, but also that kind of speaks to Torchwick as a character, too, is he's a businessman, first and foremost. So uh, even though it, it turns out to be a loose end for Yang when she's trying to find out some more information with Neptune, it, it speaks to the character. He's not going to stick around where he's going to be leaving dirty laundry. Right. So. Exactly. He ties up all those loot ends. He doesn't want anything uh, coming back to bite him, mm -hmm. unless it's mm -hmm. somebody who is punching a mech. <laughs> can punch it to <laughs> I, I adore you Yang. Like Yang and Neptune interaction, I'm sure you feel the same way. Oh, um, yeah. Well, obviously, Weiss is a little bit jelly of the uh, Neptune and Yang interaction. <laughs> so that's some drama that's going to come about. 
But it's also interesting knowing, you know, stereotypically we have the damsel in distress and the, the male hero who comes to rescue her. Uh, that's not the case in Ruby. Yang is the one in charge and she sees Neptune as an equal and someone who can fight alongside her, but she's not afraid to take the, the leadership position, which is nice. Yeah, she, yeah, she definitely that. doesn't think, I don't think she thinks that highly of him. I mean, especially no. considering, you know, that last comment. So where did they go? And, you know, Junior's <laughs> like, who is this guy? <laughs> 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 like, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> she just whacks him in the face. He's not important. <laughs> did you beat him up and this grab him by the crotch too? Anyways, I see <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Yang was well. Yang was on fire this episode. Oh, no, no, I'm awesome. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's also, and I adore that we got this little bit of confirmation. Her semblance is that she takes damage, absorbs it, and basically turns it around to become stronger. She's a super saiyan. Yeah. She's a I am so, so happy. Saiyan. Best part of the episode, I thought. <laughs> it was like, don't worry, don't worry. She's got this. This is why she absorbs cartoonish amounts of damage. There's a reason. <laughs> And uh, in Volume 1 specifically, yeah, there's we, another... Yeah, we talked about this earlier today, mm -hmm. but there's a scene where uh, Yang fights an Ursa. Mm -hmm. When he... Uh, when, remember her hair falls out? I don't know if y'all saw that. Oh, monster! Yes. One, <laughs> grab it, her hair falls out, and that's when her eyes turn red, and she's just like... <laughs> yeah. She literally has, like, the energy blast. Just like you were saying, that's the first time she goes, quote-unquote, Super Saiyan. And, it, I mean, some of that's been played off of the uh, Samson and Delilah myth that, you know, or uh, not myth, but the biblical story that his power came from his hair. And kind of Yang is kind of playing off that as well as that her power is a little bit in her hair. And that's why you see the glowing whenever she gets enraged. It's basically charging up her energy, which is, you know, a pretty neat visual as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she doesn't get a haircut anytime soon. That'd be yeah. terrible. <laughs> That'd be a crime. She's going to go with a sweet bob. Or like accidentally, you know, like be fighting and just like burn all of a sudden her hair's on fire. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I feel like she could pull it hey, off. Hey, Weiss would be there to ice it down, right? There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that would just end well for everyone. Right. <laughs> Ruby's just watching like, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> Blake goes to get popcorn. Here now, okay. <laughs> All right. Just go with it. <laughs> so, as as you mentioned, you know, it, they they kind of hit a dead end with uh, with their search and their part of the investigation. Um, but Blake and Son have a little bit more luck uh, when they when they go to investigate and they see that Torchwick obviously is, you know, he's being presented as somebody who is going to lead the White Fang to victory, and that initially causes a lot of discontent yeah. within the White Fang because they're like, "What is this guy? Why did you bring a?" human to like our big rally meeting and but yeah. he's very charismatic he manages to turn it right around and get everybody on his side so that yep. and I, going back to what we talked about earlier with people with different motivations but definitely Torchwick uh, in trying to convince the White Fang he's not afraid to completely cast aside any connection that he has with the other humans that he works with because he's worked with several and he just <laughs> throws it out there of humans are awful and I know I couldn't believe that I was like a, your, why is not everybody trying to, bus. yeah, like, why is everyone not trying to kill this guy, and kind of, a, why are they so open to him, and then all of a sudden he's like, I hate humans, and this is why, and then everyone's like, oh, if we're on the same page, then I guess we're, I, I guess we'll listen yeah. to you. Yeah, we can get behind that. <laughs> well, you gotta know your audience, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I hate humans, too. An yeah. enemy of your enemy is your friend. Yeah, I, guess. Uh, I think Torchwick's more of a guy who just tells people what they want to hear. Oh yeah, if it serves his yeah. means. Yeah, I honestly it's funny too, think there's specifically one of the faunus uh, points to him whenever he first comes on stage and says, "What's a human doing here?" And you're yeah. absolutely right that you know there's obviously that trepidation at first, but he can work a crowd. He can make sure that his objectives get met. So you know, for, it's only a split second that there's a bit of doubt in the White Fang, and then they're completely eaten out of his hand. Yep. Yeah. He played them like a fiddle. <laughs> I honestly don't think he'll survive to the end of the series. I think at some point he's just going to get I saw iced. That look. He seems uh, yeah. like that kind of villain. Well, he's <laughs> either going to he's either going to get his uh, his comeuppance at some point, or he's going to be a cockroach that never dies. Or Cinder <laughs> will dispose of him. I can uh, easily see. Or he'll know. become Starscream. <laughs> and just <laughs> never <laughs> die. And everyone will hate him. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, like, we're both like, hmm. <laughs> Transform into a Harrier jet. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <For> <laughs> <us>. <laughs> No, we don't even know what's going to happen. Can we I mean, not gloss over your Transformer noise? <laughs> <laughs> do Please again. do that more regularly is my point. That was my Any Torchwick reference. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. 
<laughs> Guys, I, I got a question kind of out of left field. The uh, the chat, I'm, and I apologize, I missed whoever asked it, but she said, uh, do Karen and Lindsay like their characters' original outfits more, or do they prefer the new ones? Ooh. I know this is the audience wants to know. I like both. I like the new ones a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, but... you always got to go with the OG look, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> the first skin, yes. Fair so, enough. Just because it was our first, was the first time we ever saw our characters were in obviously the first outfit, so we kind of probably have a little bit of a, you emotional know, bias, yeah, emotional yeah, connection sure. towards that. But I did see Weiss's outfit, and I was like, oh, <gasps> oh, <laughs> I <want> that <laughs> It's yes, beautiful. We the clothes that the characters wear. We were talking about that earlier today, but some of the character uh, clothing designs that Monty incorporates into the show is amazing, and he finds them all. He's very conscious of people who want to cosplay as the characters, so he makes sure that they they exist. All the pieces of clothing that people wear are things that can be bought in the real world, okay. and he makes mm -hmm. sure that they all have pockets too. So cosplayers, don't worry about holding stuff if you're dressing up as a Ruby character. <laughs> you're good. Thoughtful. That's, That's a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> that is a godsend. It's like, oh, here's here's a dress cosplay. It has no pockets and no place to put anything. And I'm like, I'll wear yep. it, and I will carry around my big shoulder bag, and that's what happens. Yep, that's like me. Weiss has like a little, I call it like her mini fanny pack mm -hmm. on the very back of her outfit, right above her skirt, just to hold stuff. And I was so happy that I got that. I was like, yes, because nothing else has pockets, like you said, or anything. So... It was awesome, but like everything, yeah, has a whole story. Like Lindsay said, it's really cool that you know people can cosplay easily as these characters without spending a ton of money or a ton. I mean, I mean, people do spend a ton of time, but it's not required to you know be someone that you want to be for fun for a day. You know, if you want to have Halloween on you know a Saturday in July and go <laughs> yeah. to a Comic Con, do it, yeah. and you can affordably. So that's pretty cool. Gotta uh, use the rest of the money pie and Comic Con tickets. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I want to know if I could pull off the the no, Ruby thing on a day to day. Th like I don't think I can get on the bus dressed as Ruby. I don't think I could pull that off. You could uh, no, kind of. closet cosplay is she, what they call no, it. Okay. You, you say that it's not even true. I've seen and we were talking about this earlier. Also, we have seen several fans who gender bent uh, our characters, or I've seen male Ruby cosplays that are superb, and they'll mm -hmm. they'll modify the costume into ways that they want it to be done. I've seen male Weiss uh, people cosplaying as well. Yeah, there are names for them too, but I yeah, can't remember uh, right now. Well, gender bending is if you just take a character and obviously cosplay it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. Gender, yeah. You know, this is a guy. For those of you who don't know, don't know about the audience, but uh, it's Garnet, I believe. Garnet's Ruby. Yeah. Garnet is Ooh. Ruby. That's been That's the name. That's why I've seen that going yeah. around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fun. Yeah, so you can cosplay Ruby. And <laughs> okay, and, and, you, and you should. I know. You can yeah. cosplay uh, whoever you want. Just, just use it. Look, we've got a show true. in two weeks. Like, I mean, you've got a yeah, ticking clock at this oh, point. Yes, uh, I know. Well, now so, next time I want to see you come in dressed in as Ruby. Crap, you okay. realize our final show is the day before Halloween. Fantastic. And I've been working on a Jean cosplay. Perfect. Fantastic. Be careful with the scythe, though. I hear that's a uh, pretty hard to get onto buses and in doorways and stuff. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Airplanes true. are right out. At Comic Con, mm -hmm. there were I, I saw quite a few Ruby cosplayers actually, and there were a few that had these huge sites that need to be these tiny little girls <laughs> carrying around these huge sites, and I would just be like, "That is amazing!" Uh, so it's yeah. screen accurate. Well, I would see masses that's of people, and then just a side. Just <laughs> yeah, that's that's like, oh, earlier, we're like, they're like, "Who cosplays?" We're like, we see a lot of Rubies, but at the same time, we probably see a lot of Rubies because of the scythe, like sticking <laughs> yeah. out of everybody's head. That's true. Sure. We've been you know, it's probably. She's like, probably oh, just the, the leader oh, of the group of cosplayers, <laughs> right. and she's just leading an entire group. She's of just team yelling, group. checkmate, <laughs> checkmate. <laughs> follow the side, follow the side, and they're all behind her like ducklings. <laughs> it's impossible to get around Comic Con otherwise. Oh, I know. <laughs> Hey guys, Ruby the mama duck. For, the, for people out there, I think the video Skype is having some serious challenges. So we're going to continue with just audio only. So uh, so please just stay with us here. Sorry about the visual challenges. Hi. but I was uh, going to say mine went out too on my phone. That's how we were watching it. And I wasn't sure if it was just yeah, my phone no, think, or if it was. Yeah. No, but everybody can hear you well. So we're going to continue in that, that yes. manner. We, we so do have an update. You do have an update. Loudly, okay? We have, in case no uh, one else uh, has you're said missing it, something. the <laughs> Ruby and Penny ship is called Nuts and Dolts. Dang it! Uh, oh. I like Steel Magnolia. No, Steel Magnolia is way better. No, yeah. 
<laughs> we're changing so this. I still like Steel Magnolia. Canon, Steel Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. Put it, it in the show. After Buzz <laughs> TV <laughs> exclusive, like Steel, Magnolia Steel Magnolia is the new <laughs> ship name. <laughs> you know, if it makes it to the show, I'll know I've hit the big time. <laughs> I hope that someone right makes credit. fan art too of like a movie poster of Steel Magnolia, but it's just Ruby like hugging Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <I love> Perfect. <laughs> hey, Tumblr. Tumblr, you know what to do. Tumblr assignment. You know what to do. Last week they gave us Moisturize Me. This week, Steel Magnolia. Come on, Tumblr. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So you guys, you know what's amazing about this show to me? Like, I'm, again, I'm relatively new to anime and the, the just how passionate your fan base and community is. It's unbelievable. So you two as as voiceover artists, like what? I mean, obviously there's like an endless supply of like fan art and like swag and shirts and cosplay items. Like you guys probably have to be a little selective about what you pick and choose to keep. Like what are your favorite like, you know, Ruby memorabilia or costumes or, or things that have been created in the community? Oh, it's like picking children. I, it is. That's why I had to ask. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> sorry, it's well, tough. I actually have this small of a, I have a wall that isn't being used that is kind of in my kitchen entryway area and I've named it the Weiss wall and I've covered it in cork board. So basically anything I get from fans, especially anything that's hand drawn or that you can tell like, you know, they really took time sure. doing their appreciative for, I will pin it to my Weiss wall. So if you have any fan art or anything, feel free to send it to me. I also, you know, if anyone sends me something online once a month, I'll do a Walgreens trip, as I call it, a Weiss Walgreens trip. <laughs> and I'll get everything printed out and post it to my wall, literally. <laughs> I'm literally picturing an entire wall just covered in fan art. This mosaic of white. It, it is. After, I mean, even, and it's only been a year. And I mean, I haven't even put everything from a year. If I put every single thing I got up there, it'd be crazy. But I mean, you know, we definitely appreciate everything that our fans do. And, you know, it, the cosplay is really what gets us a lot just because, you know, making costumes takes so much time. And I mean, not to say that, you know, anyone who does like a pencil drawing of us, it takes a long time, doesn't, but it's also just weird the fact that someone's doing that. <laughs> and someone's becoming the characters that we play is the craziest part is that mm -hmm. people come to us and they're like, I'm Ruby. I'm like, I, I play the voice of what you're dressed as. Yeah. That's nuts. Like that's weird, and I I know specifically there's a couple of times at conventions where we're we're dorks and we like being dorks. Sure. So when we see people <laughs> cosplaying as our characters, we'll sometimes just to you know be dorks, we'll come up to them and poke them on the back or something, and be like hello, and then like walk away. <laughs> <laughs> they're like okay, whatever, weird girl, and then they see me later in the booth, they're like oh you're Ruby. I'm like yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a weirdo, and I <laughs> awkwardly touched you. I'm so sorry. I, I feel like that <laughs> needs to be an RT Life but video or a recap or something. <laughs> just right. do going around punking people. <laughs> Honestly, though, we're just so humbled to have people be interested yeah. in the show and the droves. And honestly, literally, they are droves of fan art that can be found online of the show. And the, the amount of time that people dedicate to making these creations or even uh, fan art that is unique to them. Like we were saying that people modify the costumes to make it their own. Mm -hmm. They'll do the same with artwork. And we have a wall that's right outside this room that we're in in our that's office true, yeah. that's lined with Ruby art. And it's an entire hallway, but it's nuts. And people, it keeps sending it in. It hasn't stopped yet. So I know, we have to keep <laughs> trading pictures like every week here at the office of all the different fan art. And it's, it's like, a, like Lindsay said, it's very, very, very humbling yeah. and just surreal. And I want to say surprising, but at the same time, I mean, it's surprising the amount, you know, of, you know, recognition that we've gotten as just girls. But the fact that, you know, she's obviously known for the longest running web series, Red vs. Blue. So we mm -hmm. knew when Ruby mm -hmm. came out, it was something different. And that, you know, we had that fan base to go off of. And we were just crossing our fingers that, you know, the Suzy's are going to, you know, sink, we're going to sink or swim on this one. And it, it's, you know, we swam miles. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Not only did we swim, but it took off into the sky and became there you an airplane. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in a Transformers territory. <laughs> it flew up basically, into space absolutely. and became a star. <laughs> <laughs> became Starscream, man. It will never die. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, I, I'm sorry to say we're actually running out of time a little oh, no, bit. We went so quick. Oh, we I just know. got started. This I is know. crazy. I know. I feel like we just started too. Yeah. Time flies. It does. It really does. It's been so much fun talking to you guys. Uh, do you guys have any closing thoughts uh, that you want to share with the fans regarding the rest of this season? 
well, um, obviously, thank you is the yes. biggest thing we could say. It and wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for the fact that you all were watching. So uh, keep watching. <laughs> yep. Please, <laughs> please keep watching. And, you know, there's only bigger and better things to come, as y'all saw from this episode. You know, that's kind of setting a standard, you know, for the rest of the season. So, you know, this if, if, if you thought this fight scene was epic, you know. Yeah, we're only on episode four of this volume, and we're fighting giant robots. So <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> can so only excited. go up from here. I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. Where can the people find you guys if they want to find out more? Social uh, media. Personal our personal Twitters are, uh, mine is I am Lindsay Jones. I know it's a little bit much, but you know, Lindsay Jones was taken. So what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my Twitter handle is Kara, K-A-R-A, -A, the number four T-X. So it's like Kara for Texas. Yeah, I know it's weird, but it was actually my first assignment ever in college seven years ago. My teacher was like, hey, there's a Twitter thing that's happening now. So, yeah. <laughs> Remember when Twitter wasn't cool? We're like, whatever. And <laughs> my yeah. first assignment in college was to make a Twitter account. And I'm like, this is stupid. Okay, fine. <laughs> sure. But then all of a sudden it took off. I'm like, I'm not going to change it. I don't need no first and last name. I'll just be care for Texas. And now look at you with all your followers. You're crazy. But <laughs> if you want to watch episodes of Ruby, you can find them at roosterteeth.com, obviously, or on YouTube. But we'll air... Uh, we air episodes on roosterteeth.com, and then the week after they have aired on our website, we will put them on YouTube. You can also find them at crunchyroll.com. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so, so much for joining us tonight. I think that about wraps it yeah, up it for the pleasure, Ruby guys. Panel. Thank you. Thank it was a you blast so talking much. with you. Hope to talk of to you guys course, again thank soon. You. Thank you, guys. Bye, it was ladies, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Right. Well, guys, that was awesome. That was I, fantastic. Right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right? I just want to that watch Transformers. That's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah. The series, and, and, not and, the we'll movie. The series, not the, the, movie. Series, not yeah. the we'll, movie. We'll talk afterwards. I, we, we've got a couple good recommendations Coming soon, Transformers <laughs> after Buzz. Fantastic. I wish they're I starting wish. a new series on making that noise for like anyway, 20 minutes. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and um, let the people know where they can find us. Patrick, where can the people find you if I they want to find out, Mom? Yeah, I don't know why they possibly would, but I host a small video game podcast called Pixel by Pixel. Largely, it's you find it on iTunes. It's about all things video game and nerd. And uh, I'm at Twitter at P to the D's, D-E-E-S. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, and the Rooster Teeth site at Kiaxe. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also on the Sword Art Online, Attack on Titan, and Legend of Korra panels all on Sunday. You can find me on Twitter at SoapboxMark, on Rooster Teeth at SoapboxMark, and on YouTube every week at SoapboxCarTV, where we actually have Pixel Pro Wrestling, a video game competition oh, right. th uh, Ooh, show. It's wonderful. We have a title belt and everything. And you can find me here at AfterBuzz on NXT, and we're going to be starting Epic Meal Empire real soon. Ooh, Thanks for joining fun. us this week, sir. Fun stuff. Tons of fun. You can follow me on Twitter at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. You can also find me on the Sword Art Online and Attack on Titan after Buzz panels on Sunday nights as well. Thank you guys so so much for joining us for the Ruby panel tonight. We will see you guys in two weeks. See you later. Bye. See ya. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Just see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.